Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to do a simple parametric object. Uh, it's going to be um, kind of a parametric product that you can do for um, industrial design applications. It could be a vase or uh, something that is um, like a holder. Um, I don't want to give necessary functions or purposes uh, for this uh, formal exercise, but you're going to be um, looking at basically some graph mapper options as well as surface uh, patterning or texturing uh, techniques. So um, we're going to develop this using circles. So I'm going to just start with um, a single circle. And what we're going to do is actually divide the curve of the circle. Um, so we can divide it into odd or even numbers. I'm actually going to choose even numbers for this exercise. So let's come up with a large number like 32. Uh, you can double click to our slider and fix it to even numbers and attach it here. Um, now what I want to do is um, actually create some sort of an undulating movement around um, around these um, these points. And we're going to use some sort of displacement. Um, so we could actually do uh, this in two ways. We can use a graph mapper for um, for manipulating the location of these points uh, using vectors, or we can do it um, by filtering the points. Um, so I'm going to show you um, um, the filtering option. So we could actually do a quick dispatch. Uh, what this would do is it will filter your points into um, two groups. So we will have even and odd um, points in our list. So A list will be um, even numbers, um, B list will be um, uh, false numbers. And if you look at the pattern, it's true false. Uh, this comes in default. Now what I want to do is move these points outward or inward. It kind of depends on how you want to manipulate these. Um, so we could actually do it this way. You can actually draw, um, let's say, a vector or a line to the origin of the, of the circle. So let's say we get the origin of our circle and I want to um, draw these lines. Now uh, we could actually evaluate a point along these lines. You could also move these points inward or outward. It totally depends on how you want to um, work with um, your shape generation. Um, but what I want to do is um, basically evaluate a point along this line. So you could simply do point on curve for this case. So this would give you an evaluated point along, um, along this, uh, this line. Now what I want to do is weave these points back together. So what I can do is use the weave function and um, we started with the A list and then we manipulated the B list. So we could simply weave this information back together uh, like this. And the weaving pattern is basically putting two streams of information into a list. So it's grabbing one item from list zero and one item from list one. So if 16 items come from zero and 16 items come from one, then we will have 32 items. Now you will see that they're put back together. And if you do um, interpolate these points and make it periodic, um, here we're, we have the periodic option, you can connect a Boolean toggle to it. You see that we are getting kind of a um, parametric profile now so we can actually play around uh, with the shape of it if you um, pull the point too much inward you can see this kind of creating um, it's kind of flipping the curve because it's self intersecting we are interpolating between these points so we you might want to limit how much in and out you want this shape to go so this is kind of the simple um, shape that I want to work with um, the second part of this exercise is to create a series of these vertically and then um, come up with a way of um, manipulating these uh, sections and profiles using graph mappers. So if you got uh, this portion, then the second portion would be um, 
kind of a step forward in cha changing this into a form basically. So I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to disable this version. That's basically the primary code we built. Now we're going to create a series of circles. So let's uh, start with that. I'm going to disable the uh, this portion of this code as well. I'm going to move it around. Now let's create a series of um, circles. So there are a bunch of ways you can do it. You can use, for instance, range function. If you want a total height, let's say we want the height to be 100 and we want um, 20 sections. So this will supply basically um, all the way uh, values to up to 100 and we will have 20 values. So it will go with increments of five. Now I can do X, Y, Z points. This will be Z points. And I can simply create now 21 circles using um, these points. Now I'm going to keep the radii to be the same and I'm going to um, enable this part to see if our weaving and other functions are working. Now, um, we have to keep in mind that we are actually doing this operation to multiple circles. So you can see here, for instance, um, when we subdivide um, or divide the curve into points, this um, data becomes grafted because we are applying the same uh, information to 32 uh, sorry, 21 circles, but we're getting 32 points for each. But here I'm using the centroids of each of them. So if you want this information to replicate for all of the remaining uh, circles, um, here, for instance, the data is mismatching, uh, you can simply right click here and graft. Uh, what that will do is it will basically apply the same subsequent operation that you see here to all of the curves. So it's kind of hard to see, um, but what I'm going to do is uh, basically select this part and disable its preview. Now you will see that we have actually created um, 21 circles that are basically doing the same profile operation. Um, you can also reduce the step size if you ha want to have uh, less sections. You can also reduce the radii. And we're kind of getting somewhere. Now we have uh, basically profiles that we can work with. So this is um, basically doing the same operation for all the circles. Now I'm going to make another copy. Um, you, you don't have to make these copies. Actually, you can operate on the same, um, same script. But um, I want to separate what I'm also adding on top of each other. So um, now let's actually try to differentiate these circles a bit. For instance, we can change their radii, we can change their um, turning, and we can also um, change this coefficient here. So for these, I'm going to use graph mappers. So let's start with the radii option. Um, right now I'm using uh, radius values that are between, um, looking at values that are between 10 and 25. So that could be our interval. So let's say we create another range here. And now we have to construct our own domains. And let's say our lower value is 10. Um, so actually, this is this this could be the way it is. This is this could be from zero to one. So I can simply disconnect this. What I want to change is the output of the of the graph. So let's start with the Bezier. Now what this is going to do is it's basically going to create um, 21 values that intersect with the graph. So you can see here, for instance, um, I'm actually creating 10 because I have 10 circles. So these could work like coefficients. If I want to multiply them, for instance, with my overall radius value, they will work like uh, percentages. So I can simply do a multiplication here and feed this into my radii. Now you can see that we can actually control the radius values um, along the vertical direction. So we could have um, any type of um, parametric application uh, for the radii now. So I'm going to create a shape that looks um, like this, for instance. You could also make it a bit wider at the base if you want. 
Now we can replicate this operation the same way to, um, to this line evaluation, for instance, if you want to create some sort of a change in depth of the surface, or if you want to, for instance, rotate these objects, you can also create it. For instance, let's make um, a twist. Let's create a linear graph this time. And I want to multiply this output with 180 degrees. You can also make it all the way up to 360. Let's make it 360. And I want to rotate these circles. So we could do um, rotate an object in a plane. Let's say we want to rotate um, these circles. You could also do a bunch of things. For instance, you can rotate planes. So if you want to specify a plane here at the XY location and then rotate these planes, what that will do is it will basically create rotated circles along those planes. Now this by default takes in radians, so you might want to supply degrees. And it's giving me a preview, but that doesn't matter if you supply this to the point, these would actually look turned. Now you can actually play around with um, this. Now the rotations are the same, but we can get some sort of twisting motion. It's kind of hard to see what's happening. Uh, if you want to see what's kind of going on, you can simply loft these uh, surfaces here. So if you uh, remember that our data is grafted because we have these dashed lines, if you want to loft all these profiles, you have to flatten it. Graft basically feeds the information individually, but flattening it would make it into a single list. And there you have it. Now we have um, kind of a cool looking um, parametric object. Um, so we can actually look at how those profiles are connected now. So I'm simply creating uh, lofts and blends. Um, you can create more twists, for instance, but you could also um, we could also add a, a few more things. For instance, um, we can also change uh, not only how much we want this thing to turn. Here, for instance, I can change its uh, full rotation angle. Uh, we can also change this depth. Uh, one more thing I want to add is, um, for instance, as this object is going upward, I want this indentation to get lower and lower. How do we achieve that? So if you make another copy of the range and bring it here. Now remember that the information that we get here is simply a number, right? It's a number between zero and one. And here we are feeding in um, kind of a grafted data. So I have to evaluate another point along this line. Uh, this could seem a bit more advanced. You don't have to do this, but basically rather than evaluating this um, point, um, the same way for each of these circles, I'm going to make it parametric as well. So we have to do this um, per line, basically. Um, so one way to do it is use evaluate curve function. And you have to right click here and reparameterize. So what that does is it gets the lines and this number will work like a zero and one coefficient. So you want this to be um, basically between zero and one, but uh, remember that when we make it really low, lower than 0 0.5, the profile curves get really segmented. So we don't want that to happen. So you can basically make your graph um, start from, for instance, um, like a mid value like this and go all the way up to one. Now when it's one, that will basically create a flat surface. So I'm going to also graph this these numbers so they are fed individually and you can actually see where these points are along the, those sections so these basically towards the top they appear on the border of the circle now if I replace this information you will see that now we have parametric indentations along the surface so let me bake one more so that you can see now why does it look this way it's because um, we have a lower value towards the base, which is, um, let's actually look at it, 0 0.62. But as the profiles are going up, our parameter goes up. So here we have uh, basically a value of one. Um, we can also change this to be um, another type of profile. For instance, we can make it start 
from uh, 0.6, kind of a tangent, and then end up with a tangent so that it will be flattened towards the top. I'm going to bake this too. And we can look at these a bit better in the rendered mode. Now you can see that's kind of um, that's kind of the shape I wanted. Basically, it starts with an indentation but ends with no indentation, right? You could also reverse uh, this if you want to change the graph, for instance. If you want it to have no indentation at the bottom or on the top, uh, you can actually make it something like this. You can. Let's see, this one doesn't have it, but there is a rich graph mapper with more points. So you can actually use rich graph mapper. So um, our source domain will be 0, 0 to 1. The input values will be coming from my range. Target values are 0 to 1. And we can simply do a five point interpolation. So we could start with zeros and ones, but towards the bottom, you can go very, you can go inward. Now this will create indentations in the middle. Um, not sure if this would work, but let's actually make it like this kind of a chasm. All right, there you have it. So it's, it has more indentations in the middle and less towards the base and top because the parameters are close to one, right? So when it's 100%, the points are evaluated close to the circle, and that doesn't create any indentations. You can also look at the uh, emerging profiles here. All right, so there you have it. So we had, um, we basically made a simple script uh, using circles and surface points, and we were manipulating these profile curves so that you can create some parametric objects. Um, I hope you liked this tutorial. Um, I'll be showing you some other stuff uh, soon with uh, more surface operations. Thanks for watching.